Ultra Magnetic MCs. The Ultra Magnetic MCs are Cool Keith, Said G, TR Love, and DJ Mo Love. As the story goes, Said G was originally a DJ, and he had a younger brother who was a DJ as well. Said G and Cool Keith went to the same high school, DeWitt Clinton High School. Cool Keith was trying to put a demo together, and he hooked up with Said G's younger brother to do that. Cool Keith also had an MC partner that didn't work out, and at the same time, Said G was expressing an interest in rhyming, so he hooked up with Cool Keith, and they became partners. Previously, when Set G was DJing, he was also DJing with Mo Love and about 10 other DJs. They DJ house parties and things of that nature. So once Cool Keith and Set G got together, Cool Keith came up with the name Ultra Magnetic MCs, and there you have it. Now this is gonna be like an anthology of sorts, so I have quite a, a bit of information to cover, so I'm gonna dive right into it. But as always, I do have to lay out a bit of context. The Ultra Magnetic MCs, they're really a hard group to categorize. Actually, they're an impossible group to categorize. I always say, as far as MCs go, you just can't compare MCs because they all rhyme. You know, everybody has a different style, different subject matter, different delivery. And just as you wouldn't compare different weight classes of, of boxers or fighters, you just can't compare MCs. I see things on, on social media you know, these questions where people ask, you know, who's better between, you know, Tupac and Jay-Z? And I always chuckle at those kind of comparisons because just because they both rap doesn't mean that you can compare to them. Like they, their styles are so different. Their subject matters are so different. Their deliveries are so different that they're just, you, you just wouldn't compare those two. Where Jay-Z, you know, spits uh, street, street game and, 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 and hustle game and he spits it with a certain kind of bravado and confidence. Um, you know, sometimes Jay-Z will say something, and if you write it down and read it, it doesn't sound like as much, but it's the way that he says it, his delivery of it, that makes it slick. Where a cat like Tupac, um, same thing, you could write his rhyme down, and it may sound simplistic, but his delivery and his cadence and the emotion that he puts into the rhyme is really what uh, what makes him the, the artist he is with the impact that he has. So it's just, it's, it's impossible to me to compare uh, two MCs like that. It's not the same. So as so it is with uh, a guy like Chuck D. I see a lot of people say, oh, you know, on these top lists of lyricists, you never hear Chuck D. Well, you never hear Chuck D, not because he's not a good MC, you never hear Chuck D because Chuck D is in a world all his own that, that he created. His delivery, not so much the subject matter, but the way that Chuck says what he says is so unique to him that it is almost nobody to compare Chuck to. Chuck is another MC where you could write his rhyme down and you could say, well, this, this isn't really, you know, he didn't say much. But it's, it's Chuck's voice, it's Chuck's delivery, it's the energy, it's everything that, that makes makes the the rhyme what it is and, and it makes him the complete MC that he is. So it is with the ultra magnetic MCs. I go through those comparisons to 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 make the point of ultra magnetic. There's really nobody to compare to ultra magnetic. You got other groups who have their own slang like you know like a De La Soul or Camp Low, but it's not even really their own slang with Ultra Magnetic. They're, even their name, just starting with, you know, the Ultra Magnetic MCs. You know, when I first heard that name in 86, 87, it immediately caught my attention because it's like, you know, well, why would cats name themselves the Ultra Magnetic MCs? What's that about? And then when I heard their their rhymes and, and just the subject matter and the patterns and, and mainly the subject matter, it was so far out there that, um, you know, I started to understand, but it's just n nobody else could do what, what, Ultra, what Ultra does. Now, I've been bombarded with cats, you know, on my comments requesting, you know, when are you going to do a Cool Keith lesson? Do one on Cool Keith. And I, I can't do that at the same time that I do the Ultra lesson. And because I'm really, really a stickler for being as chronological as, as humanly possible, um, I have to do Ultra first because, you know, he came, Ultra is what birthed Cool Keith. Well, Cool Keith at least started with, with Ultra. And Cool Keith's solo personas um, are so so varied and so many that it would be it would be way too much to put into one thing. So I, I'll start here with, with with the whole group. And it wouldn't be fair to the group 
for me to go off on a tangent about Keith, even though Keith is, is a great thing within the group. You know, the, the group, uh, each man, you know, um, no, no I'll, I'll say no member was, was greater than, uh, than the group itself. So I say that to say that in the future, there will be a cool Keith lesson, you know, to cover all of his various aliases and styles and, and everything else. But right now, I just, I just want to, uh, get into the ultra magnetic MCs. And what I'll be doing is going from the, uh, the, the first three albums, uh, critical beat down is what I'll start with. Then I go to funk your head up. Then I'll go to the horseman. Now the thing that made ultra, you know, so, so different, um, like I said, mainly it was their terminology. Just, you know, instead of referring to a to you know a cat as a sucker MC, which was you know the <laughs> it was a choice you know uh, words of disrespect to call a cat back in '86, '87. You know, ultra ultra would call you a germ or or a parasite. You know, they just were on something crazy. You know, and not anybody could pull that off. It, it could have sounded corny with anybody else, but the combination. Of the crazy production they had, um, you know, paired with you know the scratches and, like I said, you know, no no man, every man played his position and no man was greater than the group. And that group as a whole, they put out some of the most bizarre, but at the same time dope uh, music. You know, Chuck D calls them the, the king of the twelve inches because you know they just had so many twelve inch singles. And they were all dope, and it was just so different. Some of the spoken word uh, pieces they were putting there, you know, old parts of like you know children's records, you know, the superhero children's records that we listened to in the seventies, um, clips from you know Star Wars movies, and just all of that, you know, mixed into this gumbo along with the production and everything else. So let's get into it. The first time I heard Ultra Magnetic was 1986. And it was probably ego tripping. I'm pretty sure it was ego tripping. My man uh, El Brabador on uh, WKIE All Rap Station here in uh, in Richmond, VA. Um, first time I heard that record, and uh, was definitely uh, blown away by it. You know, the first time I ever heard it. But we'll get into that in a minute. The first thing they did was um, a record called "To Give You Love." As, as, as far as I know, they they had some demos and some stuff floating around online. You know, some other things that they did perhaps before that but as far as my research and the tracking down the thing that really really got them in there you know probably officially as a, a pressing an official pressing that you could buy seems to be um, to give you love to give you love was a pretty regular record for ultra you know compared to what they would uh, do later you know as far as delivery and it's basically uh, it's not a love rap but you know kind of in that in that vein they're talking to a girl and uh, it's definitely not as raunchy as some of the stuff they would do <laughs> a couple albums down the line, some of the uh, pornographic stuff that they would do, but um, a very regular record for Ultra uh, lyrically. With a rap so excited to rise to the top By the rubbing of my hand, your moan don't stop As I pull on your chest, my lips upon your breast To the floor, play a pleasure, I boot your blood pressure While you whisper in my ear, sweet things I do here Relax in the mind, a virgin with fear But simple to mislead with passion I will feed like a certain Casanova who keeps the seer indeed I'm here to do your right, to rest you through the night Steady moving in your bed, you twist and turn your head To a stroke every time the beat of the rhyme in a second you can bet you're warm and soaking wet not a fantasy to do i'll sit and play it cool yes the governor a woman i know i rock and rule now finish with the work you came i made your joke yes i'm gonna give you love i'm a light-skinned brother a man with a box by the sweetness of my words your mind under lock as i rip off the jeans my face is a real meaning with the popping of my finger you must now win while i reboot my show proceed it's in relation to you, it must hurt, but basically it's my need some love to thin deep, like Adam told Eve, the bird, to do the beat, I'm rocking through the night, your box is real tight, very difficult to groove, maneuver and move, in a place that's normal, smooth and transformal, like a version under pressure, you must now come through, yes the beat is set to you, the Lord supreme, very difficult to tell, refuse to ring my bell, as a leader, I can do when love is mad as hell, cause yes, I'ma I'm give you love. love.
Yeah, so like I said, they had not yet found their uh, style or the style that they would be known for, uh, become famous for as of yet. But what you did hear, though, on that record, for those that listen, the rhyme pattern was a lot like uh, ego tripping and some of the stuff that they would do uh, later on, the way that they uh, structured a rhyme. When I play ego tripping and I discuss ego tripping, I'll discuss how it's very similar as far as how they make their words rhyme, the pattern and structure of it. You can see that early on. I liked how they used um, do or die bed style for the little, the little ah part. Not the female part, but the, the ah that the guys are doing that song. <laughs> That's Divine Sounds. Rest in peace to uh, Mike, DJ Mike Music from Divine Sounds. So they, that was a nice little usage of that. So it was, it was a typical 1986, you know, heavy drum machine sounding record. Um, good rhymes on it. Um, you know, didn't make a lot of noise back then. Probably did in the you know, in the, in the tri-state area, but, you know, um, I don't remember hearing it too much, you know, too much down here where I'm at in VA. So that that made some noise. And then the next record they did, and it wasn't an official release until later, I believe, but it was actually a promo for DJ Red Alert, and it was called Bait. And uh, Bait was definitely dope. So you start to see here the the kind of gelling of uh, Keith and uh, it said G in the back and forth is, is kind of being born here a, a lot more so than uh, on to give you love. Um, you, you hear that back and forth developing and then you just hear cool Keith. The way he sets his rhyme patterns up and his cadence is, is everything with Keith. And um, on this one, you can kind of see it coming in early. Like he said, with a GLI fade techniques, 1200s, I combined to rotate swiftly left to right on the mix. Red alert controlled by Gamma Light 98.7. Kiss upon the label of the record that he's holding beside a wooden table. <laughs> I mean, you know, he um, Keith has just got this free flowing type of style. You know, um, a lot of times it sounds like he's coming off the head. And, uh, you know, I don't know if he is or not, if, he, you know, if he's writing most of the time but a lot of times it sounds like it's it's off the head and i've said before in my lessons off the head is cool but i don't it's not that i don't respect off the head you know we used to do it back in the days i've done it before but to me i don't care how great of an mc you are off the head you just you're limited so much you know to just the spontaneity of everything to me the, the dopest rhymes are the rhymes that you sit down and you know you 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 you, you put some thought into you know, um, so off the head is cool, but um, if Keith is coming off the head on a lot of this, he's he's definitely great at it because a lot of times I've heard some of the greatest or so-called greatest come off the head, and it's still you know it's confined to being something basic, you know. And then you never know if somebody's cheating when they come off the head. And you know, I know it's great people who do it, and I you know super nat and people like that. But um, I just I rather hear some dope writings over. Uh, over, over what they call a freestyle today um, in, in any you know at any time but anyway um so yeah cool, cool keith is definitely uh showing his ass on this one and I, I saw an interview not too long ago where keith said that he uh he used to write said g's rhymes for the first few albums you know until said started writing his own so but you know said's thing was always a production anyway you know um 
and you can hear you can hear in there you know um and this is why i do some of these lessons in the order i do them i did the marley marl lesson a while ago and i talked about chopping up samples because you can definitely hear you know the drums i, I guess there's in peace to president the snare you know i hear so many snares and so many drums you know doing production myself and just listening to rap records so much but you can definitely hear the drums are being chopped there and they're throwing in nautilus by uh by bob james so I, of course i love the production on here because this was like the the golden age right at the tip of it when cats weren't crazy with the sampling quite yet you know they were mixing in you know drum machines with samplers or chopping up drums and, and throwing in records but you know you can hear all this in there you can hear a little bit of uh, rocket in the pocket by Sarone. but definitely said g was uh you know, responsible for a lot of the production on Criminal Minded, you know, BDP. You know, he was he was down uh, heavily with uh, Scott LaRock at KRS-One. So that was that was Sed's main thing was the production. So, again, uh, Bait, Bait was dope. But there's been a couple of remixes of Bait. And if you get, uh, I think there was an album called B-Side Companion, they went in and tinkered with a lot of their old tracks and, you know, added some uh, synthesizers and guitars. It's an interesting album to listen to. But, um, yeah, the original bait, you know, like I said, that's the Red Alert, um, Red Alert promo. You just can't beat it. Now, since we're on promos, I'm going to jump out of the timeline for a minute and go from 86 up to 87. And they did a promo for Chuck Chill Out. And I think it was called um, Chilling with Chuck or something like that. I don't know what the official title was. I don't even think it came out. You know, it might have been like a test pressing or acetate floating around there. A couple copies. But um, this is the Chuck Chill Out promo. Nothing to do while I beat start mine. We just chill out. The ultra magnetic, supersonic, economical, gospel, and it goes chilling tonight. We just chill out. And again, you know, the relevance of that uh, promo, like I said, I was talking about the Red Alert promo, so I just want to play a little bit of the Chuck Chill Out promo. Um, and, you know, I have to remember when I'm when I'm doing these, you know, everybody that's listening is not, you know, my age and older. Everybody's not, you know, well-versed in everything hip-hop. You know, a lot of a lot of young people come to the channel and, they, and they're learning, and I can't assume that everybody knows who Chuck Chill Out and DJ Red Alert are. So um, two DJs on 98.7, uh, Kiss FM um, from the heydays, the great days of, of New York radio. Uh, DJ Chuck Chill Out, who also made recordings too with Cool Chip and some recordings on his own on Ventertainment Records. And then, of course, you know, DJ Red Alert kind of made recordings with some of everybody. You know, Jungle Brothers, you know, he's Sparky D's DJ, is a Zulu Nation DJ, you know, down with Soul Sonic and, um, and a lot of the Zulu groups. Um, Jungle Brothers Red Alert production so I, I won't assume that everybody knows everything I'll speak um, in these lessons as if I'm speaking to someone who just doesn't know because a lot of people don't and that's and that's what it's about but in that promo what you can hear again the chopping of drums you know I told a story on the Marley video about um, the urban legend I'll say it's an urban legend for right now because I don't, I don't. Some people say it happened, some people didn't. But supposedly Marley Mall left, left his disc um, at the radio station at BLS, and you know, when him and Mr. Magic were there, and KRS One, and some of his people came upon the disc, and the disc had you know uh, Marley's isolated drum sounds from Impeach the President and other records. And I noticed said G was down with uh, you know, with the KRS camp. So I'm not saying by any means that said G had anything to do with taking taking Marley sounds. I'm just telling you the, the urban legend that went around. And again, you definitely want to check the Marley Marl lesson before you listen to this one. I mean, you don't have to, but there's connection there in, in what I'm saying with production. So you can hear a lot of the impeach the president snares again on this Chuck Chill Out 
And what I liked was that they threw in, I think that's Watermelon Man by the Headhunters. It's definitely it's definitely a Headhunters um, beat, and I think it's Watermelon Man, which was also used very well on, on Diamond Shell's album, the Grand Imperial Diamond Shell, who pretty sure that was Biz's little brother, and I think Biz did production on that. But um, I think he had a song called, I think it was called This Is Your Captain Speaking. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he used, he used that Watermelon Man break uh, very, very well. So moving on. And coming back into 1986 and coming back into the timeline properly was, of course, uh, Ego Trippin'. Um, and it was on the same 12-inch with a song called uh, Funky Potion. And Funky Potion was dope, too. Funky Potion was definitely ultra just kind of talking what they talk. You know, that kind of, <laughs> you know, they, they were crazy. They were crazy. I mean, Cool Keith talked a lot about uh, Bellevue, which is a mental hospital in New York. Um, him and Funk Master Wizard Wiz were always talking about Bellevue. In fact, I think Funk Master Wizard Wiz had an album called Bellevue Patient. And on the back of it, he's eating dog food, you know, on the back of the album cover. But Cool Keith was another one always talking about Bellevue and just being crazy. And uh, <laughs> if you listen to the lyrics, man, it might be something to it. In that vein of, like, you know, when George Clinton did the stuff he did with his groups, and you go back and look at some of the Parliament Funkadelic uh, album covers and the artwork, you know, uh, I think I've heard them say before, you know, they were, they were dropping acid and all kind of stuff when they came up with some of those concepts. I and mean, you look at like, you know, Cosmic Slop and, you know, some of the animated covers that they were doing and some of the characters and, you know, maggots and stuff. And, you know, just, you know, women with these grotesque, you know, mutilated, you know, body parts, just crazy stuff. Um, cool Keith reminds me of a rap version of that. You know, they just were talking crazy. But anyway, Ego Trippin' was on the same 12 inch with Funky Potion. And uh, again, don't have time to get into Funky Potion, but Ego Trippin' was like the breakout song. A lot of people who weren't in the know and didn't hear the promos and the, the demos and all the underground stuff that was going on, you know, uh, in New York you know, for people who knew Ultra early on, you know, as early as 85 and, you know, maybe 84 possibly. Um, Ego Trippin' was the breakout song for everybody else. And that's the first song I heard and I literally blew my mind. Man, it's so much to unpack with that record. To, to really understand the genius of the production, the first thing I would say anybody could do themselves a favor, anybody that's not familiar with, you know, hip hop production, you're not intimately familiar with it, look up a song, you can, you can go to YouTube, a song called um, Substitution by Melvin Blitz. If you listen to, listen to the whole song, it's a good song on its own. It's a very popular break beat. A lot of rappers have used substitution. A lot of rappers have chopped it up, chopped the drums up. But a lot of rappers have looped it, which is what they did on here. They, they looped it. But first, you would need to listen to Melvin, the Melvin Bliss record. At least listen to the first 
two minutes of it, but the whole song is actually a good song on its own. If you listen to what he's saying on there, and I can't get too much into that, I would love to tell what that song is about because it's a good song. And now, like, you know, 20 years later or more, when I listen to that song, I can really appreciate the song much more than when I was a kid trying to, or a youngster trying to get that record to, to, to use the beat. And I can understand the message that's in it. And I just don't have time to go into it. I really wish I could. But I'll do a breakbeat lesson and just talk about some breakbeats and talk about, um, you know, the actual songs and how good some of those songs were when you listen to them and you're not trying to go in there and excavate, you know, sounds from it for your own stuff. But listen to Melvin Bliss's record because if you do, you can get the genius of ego tripping because you can see how they did the drums, but also the little stabs. Um, and I'm assuming that they're, um, they're organs or some kind of, um, <clears throat> keyboard sounds that they're manipulating you know in the production of this and I'm going to assume it's an SP, uh, SP12 that they're using on here and they're manipulating those stabs and then they also got some synthesizer for that um, for that part but there's the other part that goes um, that's a piece of Melvin, and that's a that's a very poor representation of uh, <laughs> what it sounds like. But that's the best imitation I can do. They um, they're taking that, and again, you know, if you haven't heard the original record, you don't know how great it is the way they flip that. And that's early, early, excellent um, sample chopping in 1986. And then you know, <laughs> you haven't even gotten to the lyrics. The lyrics of it. Uh, this is going to be a long lesson. I really didn't want to go long on this, but I got so many songs to cover, and it's just so much to be said. Lyrically about Ultra, but look, who the hell this is Run DMC in 1986 as basically an unknown group? Ultra nationally at that point is an unknown group, and they come out on their breakout record with Peter Piper held a childish rhyme, <laughs> but this jam is just grooving the crowd is steady moving. And then you come back with they use a simple back and forth, the same old rhythm that a baby could conduct and join right with them. But their rhymes are pathetic. They think they cope aesthetic using nursery terms, at least not poetic, on an educated base, intelligent wise. As the record just turns, you learn plus earn. <laughs> I mean, the, the rhyme scheme is crazy, and I would really love to go in there and talk about all of that. But you just, you know, the people who haven't heard Ego Tripping or haven't heard it in a minute, do yourself a favor and listen to Ego Tripping. The, the cadences, the way that they set their words up. I mean, Cool Keith said, making migraine headaches. Your cells start to melt as the technique spin, the wax is on the felt. Motivated clockwise, the more you realize more love is moving steady by most were ever ready. Like a battery charged, I'm worse than alkaline. Yes, the mystery is solved. So seeking to find these words I'm giving extreme and out. Listen, he was talking about how Mo Love scratches on the wheels, but this is what I love. An MC who, instead of just saying my DJ is the best, he can cut the record so fast. When he says, making migraine headaches, your cells start to melt. While the technique spin, the wax is on the felt. That's basically, you know, the technique's 1200 turntable. The wax being the record and the felt being, you know, what you put, you know, under the record so it, you know, it doesn't get messed up. Motivated clockwise, you know, he's spinning the record. The more you realize, more love moving steady by most were ever ready. I mean, at the time when they put that out, I remember Eric B as president had just dropped. That was, that was a good year. That was a good year for uh, <laughs> for, for rap records. Uh, you know, EPMD was right around the corner. And Ultra was just something else. I mean, everybody was coming with banging beats at the time. But the stuff that Ultra was saying, you had to rewind it. Because if you didn't know anybody, you would think they were just talking a bunch of big words and a bunch of gibberish. But, like, for the longest time, I didn't, I had to keep saying, okay, he's talking about techniques. You know, he's talking about turntables. What is what is he saying on that? I had to, I had to catch it. And um, Cool Keith, it took me a long time to give Cool Keith the full respect. Because, like I said, I was, I was a younger cat and I was listening and I, I was trying to decipher. But it was, it was a lot to decipher. And Cool Keith was clearly, clearly ahead of his time now i know there's some diehards out there that know every little ultra song and every unreleased joint and every little demo and that's not what this is this is it's an anthology but i'm not i, I can't get into every song the, the lesson will be too long i mean you know tough city aaron fuchs put out a whole bunch of unreleased stuff on ultra and there's all kinds of stuff floating around on ultra but i'm only going for 
those uh, the records that I that I feel are standouts and that I I, I feel like are worth dissecting to say this was really different for the time. This was really groundbreaking or this was really underrated or this was very interesting. So that's what we're going for. So this is not by any means to say, oh, I'm going to name every ultra, you know, record and every ultra song. And, you know, after this, you won't need to know anything else about ultra. It's, it's not what it is. This is this is what I'm picking to say that these are the things that I think, you know, define ultra. And if you really, really want to know what made ultra dope, these these songs, not these songs alone, but definitely these ones are are in the canon. Now, again, I like the way the lessons come together because for the last few lessons, I've talked about remixes and unnecessary remixes on albums. And I always use as a standard for that um, Eric B is president and um, my melody um, because I felt from 80s from the same year, 86, I felt that those were perfect songs on their own and it didn't require remixes. And I think I also talked about uh, it's a demo by G rap, you know, in a, in a lesson recently. And all of those songs, when the albums came out, they had these remixes that just kind of ruined the song. I kind of, to me, they really ruined the song. And uh, and then on the albums, they didn't put the original versions on there. So it's a lot of people who, you know, can't really appreciate the original version of Eric B as president or the original version of uh, My Melody because it's, it's not on the album. And I don't think it's on any of the uh, extended anniversary albums and re-releases. But anyway, so is the case well, Ultra, when they put out the Critical Beatdown album and they had Funky, which I believe was 87, Funky was a perfect song. You know, the main sample in Funky was Woman to Woman by um, Joe Cocker. Um, rest in peace, because we lost him uh, a couple years ago. But that piano um, piano loop was what made Funky, along with, you know, I think Catch a Groove, you know, popular break beat, famous break beat. That was also in there. But Funky was, it was just that it was Funky. And it had a remix on the album that just, it just kind of ruined it. You know, if you heard the original, for, for me, when I heard the original funk and I loved it, and then when I heard the album, I just, I, I don't think I listened to that remix more than twice. It's just, I can't do it. But Funky was, Funky was it. You'll, you'll also notice that, um, you know, Dr. Dre and, and Tupac later did an interpol, uh, interpolation of, uh, of the Joe Cocker record for, uh, for California Love. But uh, Funky was it. Yeah, so I'm not purposely cutting said G off every time, but the way that their records were structured, usually uh, Keith, either they would both start off going back and forth and then Keith would come in or Keith would come straight in. And because I'm strapped for time, I can't I can't play a whole song on here. But um, yeah, so Funky, I mean, <laughs> Funky was just it. Um, you know, outside of the Bomb Squad, I can't think of another squad of people or production team at the time who was taking that many different samples and meshing them together the way that they're throwing catch a groove in there um behind that joe cocker beat is just you know that's somebody that knows what they're doing they know textures and they know sounds and they know where to put certain things you know they just not throwing a whole bunch of stuff over a drum beat 
and everything is meshing perfectly. So the production in the Ultra Records was just, it was it was outstanding. And again, Keith is talking, you know, just those scientific, crazy lyrics, you know, um, again, talking about, you know, cells, cells numbing and, you know, melting cells. What do you said? Um, cause cells to numb and freeze while I break off of these real smooth. Combine the piano, my voice nasal, no soprano is needed. As I get overheated and burn, while the techniques turn for the U L T R A, um, just the cadence of Cool Keep his voice, um, and like I said, the lyrics. Um, and I thought the B side of that record was equally dope. I thought mentally mad. I thought the production on it was crazy, and you know, and and lyrically, it's again, you know, the scientific rhymes that they were, you know, they were they were making a, a name for themselves with. Yeah, yeah. So that James Brown sample, that blues and pants. Um, yeah, you know, it's hard to mess that up, you know. And um, for those uh, Doctor Octagon, uh, Doc Ock fans, you can hear in the uh, <laughs> you can hear some of the vocal snippets there um, that were scratched up later in some of his Doc Ock stuff. So uh, definitely dope. Now I talk a lot in in, in the lessons um, about that that time period where the DJ um, always got shine, you know, in the groups and on the records, you know, going back as far as, you know, um, early part of the 80s, you know, songs like Jam Master J, you know, um, Jay's Game, um, all the many songs where, you know, even on Eric B and Rakim records, Rakim, I mean, Eric B always had a, a solo joint. I remember um, Eric B Never Scared was like a, a dope joint. Um, you know, EPMD always get, let their DJ have a, you know, Kayla Boss, you know, had his own song. Um, JVC Force, you know, Kirk Kazal had his song called A Move. I mean, almost every group, if they didn't make a song talking about the DJ and letting the DJ cut, you know, stuff like Molly Scratch by, by Shannon Molly, Girls Love the Way He Spins by Grandmaster Flash, if they weren't letting their DJ, uh, you know, cut and, and dedicating a song to him, you know, Scratch Monopoly by Tila Rock, you know, and Louie Lou. They were giving them an instrumental track um, of dedication. And, you know, as it was in 87 with Critical Beatdown, you had um, you had Mo Love's theme. First to rock, Mo Love's the disc jock. By my side and with the mix, clock scratches, matches, all cuts combined, the faster master, more quicker than the grand. Keep his hand going back. All right, 
you can't go wrong when you got pussy footer. Again, he's a break beat. So you got pussy footer. Assembly line. Go back and check the Cold Crush Brothers lesson. Check out uh what I talk about with assembly line and how uh, how JDL made that his break. You got assembly line by the Commodores. You got pussy footer. And you got Cool Keith with the crazy cadence on there. The master as a move faster past the whack DJs. You know, for those that know lyrics and syllabic wordplay and um, and cadence. 30 seconds to respond. Yeah. Now he's back. To the rear. You hear. Eardrums drown. The bass pound. Real stupid. We didn't loop this. No, did we scoop it? Instead we rock this. Why ducks chop this? Fighting and writing and fighting for this. Beats and wax. Rounds of facts. Fighting acts. How we did it for this one, that one. Fighters around. Check out the sounds in town. To the rhythm that we give them. In fact, you whack. Ultra Mag Skills. Cause your records, no frills. Here's your bill. Now he's back. So I like to do almost like, a, you know, certain amount of degrees of separation, you know, with these rap records, man. So much is connected with them. So um, for Ease Back, okay, so Public Enemy comes out with Rebel Without a Pause. You know, Rebel Without a Pause, they take, you know, they take a horn, a horn piece, you know, from Fred Wesley. You know, everybody thinks, oh, they sample some noise. It wasn't noise. It was just a random horn piece that sounded noisy from Fred Wesley, of uh, Fred Wesley and the JB's, you know, um, James Brown's horn player, right? So they take that. And they do that for Rebel Without a Pause. All right? That's a single. That's not on any album. It's between um, Yo Bum Rush the Show and Nation of Millions, right? And then when Nation of Millions comes out, they take that same record and they flip it backwards for Terminator X to the Edge of Panic, okay? So Ultra, as crazy as they are, they go and take the horns from Terminator X to the Edge of Panic and they make Ease Back. So they're going back and forth sampling from each other. Then you fast forward into the beginning of the 90s, and P.E., Public Enemy, comes out with Hazy Shade of Criminal, and they sample Break North from Ultra Magnetic. So it's this back and forth thing, you know, not that they were purposely doing it or whatever, but it's a back and forth of sampling each other. And, you know, Public Enemy had great respect for Ultra Magnetic. I've heard Chuck several times. Again, he called him the king of the 12 inches, and he always had respect for their production. But the ill part about Break North and the part that P.E. sampled is the beginning part. And and I'll I'll kind of loop it myself and then play um, a piece of Break North. But they sample a piece of the original Star Wars movie where Luke is talking. It might not be Luke. One of the one of the other rebel fighters is talking about the rebel base. And they just sent, you know, they take a little piece of that. You have to hear the whole piece of Break North to get it. But uh, it's just very interesting how it went back. Rebel base. And yet portable, comfortable with the sounding audio kicking. Hi hats just ticking, spicy lyrics and words finger licking. Good, but you know I could. Beat on steel, break tons of wood. Down with the funky sound. Square mix up, the record is round and turning. For the million, I'm earning. Shock the rhythm and just keep learning. This, that is supposed to grab your ear and have it move close to the speakers. So you hear me clearly. I'm out, yes, to damn it severely. You're very far and not yet nearly expressing them. But you're messing them up. Your bummy rhymes, I'm dressing them up for the battling. Like a snake, I'm rattling. The red ball with the wooden piece paddling. MCs, stop the perpetrating. And step off, release the mic and break north, north, north. Kato, my rhyme's the Green Hornet. You know you want it, rappers get up on it, I flaunt it. Throughout the metropolitan, the world's my area. Dance interior, fresh interior, decorated. A painted wall with rhymes that glow and show the biter, slow reciter. Up, who might have tried to copy this style of changing ways? To wonder if you can take me out on the microphone. I'm strong like benzene. I kill a fiend, rhymes in my tank, brains pumping gasoline. Out. I use Exxon, and any rapper's whack, my mind checks off meters and gauges, cranking up lyrical engines. Now 
I'm ready to roll on you and him, your whole crew. Let's film it. Now take two. Watch the movie. Your brain will be the star for us. When I take you far to the galaxy and leave your dome piece in the hemisphere. Now you're lost on Jupiter. Your brain revolves around you. Get stupid to trying to think where you're going on other planets. Rhymes are flowing through the Milky Way quicker than warp speed. Brains are feet with heatable rays. Ain't it good to you? I'm strong like benzene, I kill a fiend, rhymes in my tank, brains blowing gasoline out. I use Exxon, any rapper that's whack my mind checks on. Your brain is on Jupiter, you get stupider. I mean, Keith, Keith was just out there. I mean, once again, my rhyme blows up enemies, whack MCs across the nation on rotation. You get the hype at the station, promotion. I put your brain in slow motion like lotion and let it flow through the ocean. It's just flowing, and um, I always appreciated Keith. Again, I appreciate him much more over the years. I appreciated him, but um, early on, I was like, "Wow, you know, his style is so different." It's just a great thing when when you can't um, when you can't compare a cat. You know, you you can say so many MCs say that's just like this person, or he's in the same vein as this person, or he does the same kind of rhyme style as this person, but. It, it's, it's nobody like Ultra. Um, you know, Said G's production, you know, along with TR Love, um, you know, Mo Love. Mo was another one of those DJs. Like, I, you know, I talked about Jam Master J, and I said, you know, he never did anything, like, super incredible. He was just a dependable DJ. He knew where to put a scratch. He knew where not to put a scratch. This is Jay now. Perfect stage presence, you know. Those were accolades I gave to Jay. For Mo, man, on these recordings, it's like, you know, he, he knows he knows where to put what, and it's all perfectly placed. And Critical Beatdown is a perfect album. I could, just like I said with Criminal Minded, I said I could go through every song and not skip one, and I could actually, if time permitted, I could do every song. <laughs> and I still got two more albums to go. But um, it's the same with Critical Beatdown. I could literally go through every song and dissect how great it was. And the way that the samples are placed and the production on this album you know, recorded a lot of it recorded and, and, and mixed by um, Paul C. Rest in peace. Um, incredible album. Ready, and now it's my turn to build, uplift, get swift, then drift off and do my own thing. Switch up, change my pitch up, smack my bitch up like a pimp for any rapper who attempt to wear troops and step on my path. I'm willing as an A1 general, rhyme enforcer, 235 on a rhyme test. What other group of vests in line? I put them all behind. Play MC Ultra as a warning sign of my skill and what my mind deserves. I smell a great in the duck preserves. And who deserves the right to be king to scream? And shout whack poetry. What are you bugging germs that want to lure me? Quit it before I heat your ear off. Let your burn deduct another year off rapping. For a face, I'm slapping. Give me applause when hands start clapping. Now give the drummer some. Like David and Goliath, I ride the slingshot, and yes, they triumph over the weak mind who 
claim the giants. I'm on defiant. Why you're relying on your weak rhyming with connect force? But I'm the G, the rhyming is back to a delta force. Number one, Omega Supreme sound wave. Bringing your dreams to reality. And by the formality of thought. Yes, atomic, of course. You step into me, you take a loss. Radical, the replication of a place off, a post off. Immense to supplicate, crush your germ, the further eradicate, destroy. Which means to eliminate, wipe out, remove, erase, and annihilate. Suckers, crews and soloists. You need a barricade, my rhymes are hand grenades, blowing up your brain. Techniques astonishing, just like end up, my rhymes are polishing. Rappers, cause to me you're like furniture. Dusty, old, and gray, and I'm a cleanser soul. Rap to take control. I'm the G and I'm on the road. My name is Delta. Yeah, so that's uh, Delta Force One, said G, his solo joint. And of course, I mean, when you sample, you know, when you get a, a, a Nautilus sample in there and you're sampling a part that uh, everybody else isn't sampling because everybody sampled the bass line. And then, you know, you got uh, Jam Master J, rest in peace, when he did uh, the Onyx, Onyx record, uh, Throw Your Guns. You know, he, he caught a piece that nobody was really messing with. But before that, um, you know, said G, he, he snatched apart, uh, you know, <laughs> and all this has got so many pieces, but people didn't really utilize every piece that they could have. So, uh, you know, you can't go wrong with Nautilus. And, uh, you know, it's, it's said it's coming off on that one. So uh, that's his solo joint. I mean, a lot of, you know, Keith had a couple solos, you know, on the LP. But that's, you know, I would like to do more, but I, I have to move on. So that was Critical Beatdown. And, you know, everything from uh, Eagle Tripping On was all Next Plateau. Uh, the label they were on. That was the same label Salt and Pepper were, were on, um, Kings of Pressure, um, did some stuff. That's a um, group that was affiliated with, uh, loosely affiliated with the Bomb Squad and Public Enemy. Um, they had You Know How to Reach Us and Give Me the Mic. They were on, I think, Let's Go Records, which is a subsidiary of uh, of Next Plateau. I think OC and Crazy Eddie and the Great Peso from the field. There's four different stuff on Next Plateau. You know, a few artists rolled through uh, Next Plateau. I think Red Alert had a compilation on Next Plateau, but that was their label for the 87 album, Critical Beatdown. Now, because Ultra was such a hard group to really sell, I mean, they didn't have anything that was like radio friendly as far as like, you know, daytime uh, FM radio format. You know, Ultra was like mixed show late night you know you just didn't have any commercial songs at that point or at any point really so i can't really say that next plateau didn't do a good job promoting them next plateau was a you know, underground label but at the same time they did push salt and pepper which became a very uh commercial group so you know sometimes we can blame the label and say it was a lack of promotion or whatever but with the uh the template that ultra magnetic you know had embedded from the start, I, I would say they probably got as big as a group um, of that design could get at the time. I mean, you know, that, that's what they were. So uh, can't really blame the label, you know, and I can't say anything about a lack of success because I think that they were successful. I don't know what their vision was, but I think for a group as out there as Ultra was to get the, the props they got on the front end, then the back end for their album to be such a important album. I know it's made... I don't keep up with a lot of top 10 lists but I, and top 50 and all that, but I know it's made a lot of the important or so-called important list of hip-hop albums is, is, is in there. So uh, there's a lot to be said for that. So four years after the Critical Beatdown LP um, in 1991, and we're talking, you know, five or six years before the internet, and we weren't really privy to release dates for music. You know, it wasn't like, oh, every Tuesday music comes out or whatever it is you know we you just went in the record store and you saw you know what was new and for myself weekly at least i was going in the record store just to browse and see what was in there and i happened to come across the 12 inch of make it happen um and they were signed to mercury records and again you know wasn't really a lot of rap magazines at the time you know um to really cover these releases and say oh this is coming out this day so i had no idea i just happened to catch it like that didn't didn't see a press release that said they were signing to mercury or anything like that i just saw this record on mercury and i you know 
immediately picked it up. Hadn't heard it on the radio first, but it was ultra, so I knew uh, that it would be good. And it did not disappoint. Um, <laughs> definitely unorthodox as everything is with ultra. The beat was the beat was crazy. You talking about layers and layers of samples and, and, and drums and 808. And then, of course, the rhyme patterns are always, you know, otherworldly. Make It Happen is just crazy production-wise. You know, according to the credits, that's uh, Set G and TR Love on production. Um, I tell you what, I just used to zone out to the instrumental of that. I mean, you know, the vocal, of course, is dope, but the instrumental of that, just to appreciate how many samples are going on. I mean, low, you know, very low in the background. You got a Parliament Funkadelic uh, sample. You just got uh, just a, uh, a plethora of, uh, you know, of, of different snippets thrown in to make this uh, sound bad and it's just uh, an incredibly uh, produced record. Um, the sound of it at the time, it was just, it was mastered right, you know, um, their first LP, uh, Critical Beatdown, you know, if you got the wax, it was kind of low, you know, back then, you know, if you were putting anything more than like eight songs on an album, you know, back in the days, you have four songs on one side and four songs on the other, you know, on your vinyl. And uh, the more music you have on, a, on wax, on vinyl, <clears throat> the, uh, the lower your volume would be, you know, because you have a problem with the uh, the mastering. So, you know, when albums started to, you know, in the in the late 80s, you know, like a De La Soul album that might have had like, you know, <laughs> eight skits on it. And then, you know, uh, you know, 10 songs, you, know, you start getting up to 20 songs, anything over 10 or 11 songs. I remember Fear of a Black Planet, you know, a lot of albums back then were really low to the fact, to the point they would be reissued because the, um, the sound quality was so low. So I remember the um, Critical Beatdown album being kind of low in volume. Not not terrible, but it was a little low. But this this 12 inch of uh, Make It Happen and the B-side was Chorus Line Part 2, which was dope also. Chorus Line Part 1, I'll put it at the end of the lesson. Um, definitely, that was a dope record, a posse record. It had Tim Dog on it, who of course, you know, rest in peace was one of their um one of their you know affiliates that you know made F Compton and you know that that whole thing that, that he blew up off of and also Tim Dog had an album with uh with Cool Keith that was just called Ultra just them two and that was it was a dope album really good production on it anyway Tim Dog was a guest on there but I think the the kind of fun fact about that record was you know that sample I think Janet Jackson used it a few people used it to hold the beat stop the beat drop the beat that uh that came from chorus line but a uh, chorus line part two was the flip side of this new 12 inch um make it happen rappers want to step in the x then go to shit i got the mic on my hand and well equipped using my style for a firm set of action mcs be red the club windows i'm bashing throwing rhymes and bombs and some cocktails you better move quick but not slow snails. Melody change your grip to the beat right. I come correct, hit hard like a fist fight. I thank God for paving the way for writing these dope rhymes to rap as I slay. I'm kicking a rhyme grant as dope as I can and to make him say, God damn, the G's got a height jam. Crush your punk and make him beg for mercy because he's nothing. He can't touch me. The metaphor master has to blast you faster. You want to step in my way, then I'll smash you. You see, you're a bit slow. Your flow's out of sync, bro. You rhyme like a weasel. My rhymes are cock diesel. So step if you really feel cocky, and I flip and bash your skull like Rocky. 
call your boat winkle, snatch your game plan. You played out, son, like Yucky Captain Caveman. Sit you down, explain you can't go far. You rap kind of country, like some shit out of heat hard. Sat G, and I'm flexing my rap. Take your rappers by one, cold bust that ass. So now you know exactly what's the time. I'm cold Ellen on the new chorus line. the chorus Yeah, a couple of things with that. Um, You know, as far as posse records go, um... I don't remember when they started flipping it where everybody rhymes to a different beat or, you know, you got MCs where, you know, the beat flips when a certain MC comes on. But I thought that was really uh, dope how they had several beats in there. You know, the intro comes on with a certain beat, then Keith has a beat, then Seth G has a, a different beat. And in fact, his beat, you can hear some love rap by Spoonie G um, in, the, in the Treacherous 3. And again, you know, that's why I do these in a certain order because if you followed, um, and thanks to everybody who, who follows uh, faithfully, to the channel i had no idea as many people were checking for me as as, as they are and social media has kind of let me know that from the amount of people who communicated that they watch they watch every episode and they binge watch them and they watched them twice i mean that's that's incredible but anyway uh thanks thanks to everyone who, who does um and i truly appreciate the support and definitely much more coming but for those who have been following um i've talked about the love rap uh, in a new rap language, that 12 inch and, and heartbeat by uh, the Treacherous Three, and I've said how not many rap records became break beats. Um, you know, once again, that record became a break beat because you know Pumpkin, rest in peace, his drumming was just so incredible. And again, going as chronological as possible to tell a story. At the end of all of these, there will be like a big story that you can kind of follow. And there's a reason why I do them in the order that I do them, and that's why people say, "Oh, you didn't cover the West Coast." I'm, it's not because I have a bias, but it's all connected. You know, one thing piggybacks off of another. So there's a certain order that I'm going in. But anyway, um, so T-Ski Valley, um, Catch the Beat, that became a break beat. Like I said, Treacherous 3, a couple of their records became break beats. But on here, you hear them using the love rap. You even hear them kind of as like paying homage almost to uh, to the old school mixtapes with the Cold Crush and people like that. I told you, Charlie Chase, probably, uh, that was one of his favorite records to, to backspin behind the Cold Crush routines was... Um, was a love rap and you can kind of hear in the back of said g's verse you can hear uh hit a treacherous three about to say you know from the south to the west to the east to the north come on spoonie g go off you can hear that in the background like you did on many of the live old school tapes so i thought it was dope that they would pay that homage you know back in you know in in, in the 90s you know when cats had definitely you know moved on from from the old school i thought that was really dope but the actual lp that uh that would come later after that first single was a uh, funk your head up and again, you know, Mercury Records, you know, they, you know, you would think they had a bigger push, you know, bigger budget. Um, like I said, I know it sounded better. I don't know if they recorded in a different place. I, I didn't take the time to read the credits to see where they recorded. But there's definitely a difference in um, in the sound quality from the, the, the Next Plateau release up to the Mercury release, you know, as, as I said earlier. But one theme that you see coming, going through the Funky Head Up album was Cool Keith starting to do the personas. Uh, most notably Rhythm X. You would hear him talk about, you would hear him drop the name Rhythm X on, um, on his album a couple times. And you, you know, you know, those who know Ultra know that after, after that, he just had so many personas, you know, he's like the schizophrenic, you know, MC with so many different personalities and, you know, almost each personality has an album somewhere. But, uh, this was the album that had Papa Large and Papa Lodge had a couple versions. The album version, it was good back then, but it was just another song. You know, I would never have, you know, really paid much attention to it. But Papa Lodge, the 12 inch, had two remixes. And um, it had a West Coast remix that had, you know, kind of the Zap and Roger flavor to it. And then it had the, uh, the East Coast remix that had, the, you know, at the time everybody was sampling like the, the upright bass sounds from, um, you know, from jazz records, you know, records like Don't Sweat the Technique by um, by Eric B and Rakim, you know, with the doom, 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 you know, everybody sampling that kind of stuff. And that's what, um, you know, in the 90s, you know, with hard drums behind it. And that's what the Papa Large remix was. And that became the official version. After that, people kind of threw away the album version and uh, and that happens, you know, in, in, in the rap game. A lot of times the remix just replaces the album version where you don't even, nobody plays it anymore. That's happened several times throughout the genre where, you know, that's the flip of what I said earlier, how you'll get an unnecessary remix that um, they ruined it for the song. 
you know, the inverse of that is a good remix will take a mediocre song and, and make it almost the official version for people. So I'll do all three Papa Larges in a row. It'll be the original album version of Papa Large from, from Funk Your Head Up, the East Coast remix, and then the West Coast remix. I keep in shape and do my physical fitness. Your head's a numb, so your brain's a miss this. Pick them up, eat them up, pick them up, eat them up, pick them up. Go ahead, pick them up. Picky, I roll with globs and I come real sticky. Ripping the mic, I plug it up in your ears. Coys and brood, I'm coming out like bears, like Rango. Miller courts and buds, I'ma eat them with popcorn and treat them like suds, it does. Coming out with the weak, whack, wicky, wick, wickable, whack, black, jack. That's a fact, right and exact, behind your back. The funk rhyme and master, blaster. Kicking up in a brainstorm, brainstorm, rap storm, rap form, rap time, rap rhyme, rap class. I'm here to fill the past to continue. Furthermore, on the hype tip, I roll and rock, rock and roll, jazz and pop, rhythm and blues, dance and fusion, brain confusion. Look at the lights, what a night on the town. Cause I'm Papa Lodge, big shot on the East Coast. Cause I'm Papa Lodge, big shot on the East Coast. Cause I'm Papa Lodge, big shot on the East Coast. So many things to be said about Papa Large. I mean, pick him up, <laughs> pick him up, picky. Again, like I said in the beginning intro, not every, not everybody could have said pick him up, picky. I roll with globs and I come real sticky. Um, you know that would have been whack if certain people had said it. You know, dope MCs could have said that and not come off as well. That's tailored for somebody like Keith. Keith can pull it off, and that's not giving him a pass. I'm just saying that's. You know, th that's when you when you take ownership of a style. You know, like I said, Chuck D, he takes ownership of a style. He's the author of that style, and nobody can do what Chuck does. So these cats are very hard to compare to other uh, other artists, other rappers, MCs. Um, as far as the music, as far as the delivery, this is the difference between, and I can say this as an MC myself, the beat, the beat tells you what to do. The, the beat dictates your energy. 
And again, you know, I don't want to sh- totally shit on the the beat that was on the Funk uh, Funk Your Head Up album because it wasn't a bad beat. But listen to Keith's energy level on the first version of Papa Large. Papa Large on the album was just not a standout cut. It wasn't. But listen to that remix with that, you know, that that hyper uh, East Coast early '90s, you know, jazz infused, you know, uh, dope drums in the background. L- listen to how his delivery is different over that version. It's a whole different vocal take, and his energy level is on ten as opposed to two on the other one. And then the West Coast remix is just you talking about layering samples. You know, you got some knee deep in there. You got some uh, more bounce to the ounce in there. I hear some bells way in the back. There's a lot going on in that record, and um, that's a dope remix. And there's a couple other samples in there too. You know, I let you. I let. You, I won't call every sample. I let you pick them out, but. Uh, yeah, that's a hell of a record. Uh, Papa Large, that. Um, I think that was a moment for Cool Keith. I think everybody could see Keith kind of going in a solo direction. If you listen to the albums again, I no disrespect to said G, the reason I'm not playing a lot of his verses is because the way the records are set up, well, first of all, time constraints. I can't play a lot because I got so much to go through and I'm already at an hour. But Keith is always the first MC, and in a lot of songs, even on Critical Beat then, it was just Keith on them. So... The way Ultra is set up, it's almost like Keith is the lead MC. Said G is his backup, but Said G, along with T.R. Love, are, is on the production end of it. That's what it looks like to me in Ultra. So Papa Lodge was a defining moment where, you know, everybody could see. He probably saw, okay, yeah, I got to do this. I got to do this on my own. You know, so that becomes one of his monikers. He's Papa Lodge. He's Rhythm X. And then he becomes everybody after that, you know. So, uh, yeah, that was Papa Lodge was the shit. I got a fly in my hand, bam, bottle with cold crush. The place is packed with Johnny Juan, Ray Vaughn. Lovely lady smelling sweet with a lot of Avon. Jazzy J by my side, Charlie Chase behind me. Flashing Theodore, super cuts sublime me. Catching groove is the rhythm, spinning back and forth. From the east in the valley, swinging back up north. Towards the South Bronx, South you see the park in Webster. The speakers are pumping, power bass is thumping with the ultra mega amp. Keeping pep up, jumping from side to side. The double meters of peak, they have some good MCs. A lot of them, they was weak. They had no style and no metaphor, the voice to speak. Melly Mel had the best rhymes, ranking with Kaz. Kumo tried to get down, but I made him sit down. With that metaphor quickness, you're biting your bit. This stop and go turn, see the flame and go burn. To ashes, to ashes, dust to dust. To Seven dust. years later, toy, you still crusty crush. Your old rhymes are rust, very dirty and dusty. And under your arms, you're kicking power and musty. Get out of my way and let the rhythm path roll. Let me run up the charts. Freak a rhyme, turn gold while you're listening. I throw a buzz in your ear, bust the fact. Yeah, yeah, so that was Bust the Facts, um, and that's a solo Cool Keith joint. Um, a weird song, man. I, I always loved it. You know, the time period that he's talking about, it, it's a weird song. It's almost like, you know, it, is is he talking about like a dream a dream scene? You know, he's talking about being up there with Charlie Chase and, you know, and Cold Crush and chilling with Bam and, you know, all these people or, you know, uh, is this supposed to be a non-fictional thing? It's, it's an interesting song. And it's interesting because he's going at Mo D in it. You know, you can hear him say, um, Melly Mel had the best rhymes ranking with Kaz. Kumo tried to get down, but I made him sit down. Um, with the metaphor, quickness, you're biting, you bit this. You know, he's going on and on about Mo D. And then for the hook, he uses Mo D's voice from Gotta Rock when Mo D says, innovator, fast rhyme inventor. So I, I don't I never understood why he was going at Mo D like that. And you know, I talked to Mo D about the song on more than one occasion. The first time was when I interviewed him probably uh fifteen years ago. And he just laughed it off. He said, Man, it wasn't even worth me replying to because Keith is whack and you know, he's got, you know, the irritating voice and it just it sounded like garbage to me. So, you know, it's not like he didn't want to talk about it, but he was very dismissive of it. Like, he was almost above talking about it. And then me and my man, um, RBI, uh, from D.C., who was highly responsible for me doing this ultra lesson when I'm doing it, because I plan on doing this ultra lesson down the line. 
but me and him were talking, you know, talking hip hop late last year, November last year. And we were talking about Cool Keith, and you know, I was kind of motivated to to do this a little sooner than I would have. But I ran into Mo D last uh, last year, November, and RBI posed the question to him again when I was with him. And he was just dismissive of it again. You know, he just was like, you know, it wasn't even basically worth talking about. So um, I don't know if something ever happened between them, those two. Um, I don't know what the the motivation was behind the song, but it was, I always thought it was a good song. Um, in the second verse, he's talking about the Herculoids and the Disco Twins. And, you know, he's setting up this scene like it's like a back in the day, you know, um, you know, old school party one night he's just describing everything that was in the party so it's you know it's more you know cool keith he sometimes he leaves more questions uh unanswered than he answers well which is actually kind of cool because you know now all these decades later um a couple decades later at least i'm still wondering you know what what the hell was keith getting at on that song so uh buster facts was very interesting and on second thought it just came to me i was just about to go on to the next the next song but Cool Mo D on, I believe, his second album, on the How You Like Me Now album, he had a report card of sorts for current rappers, and he had this rating system, and he had each rapper's name, the Beastie Boys and a couple other groups, and he had these different uh, criteria, these different sections for how he rated them. And I remember he rated the Boogie Boys very low, probably the lowest, the Beastie Boys and the Boogie Boys, he really, really rated them low. And the Boogie Boys actually made a song uh, called KMD Step Off, and they were dissing Cool Mo D. I remember that very well, and I'm pretty sure that he rated the Ultra Magnetic MCs on there, and I don't think it was a great rating. And the more I think about it, that could have been it. It could have been as simple as uh, them taking offense to, to him rating them low on his little report card. A lot of rappers didn't like that at the time. And then on a side note, um, that kind of morphed into... Uh, Modi's book, I think it's called like the 50 Greatest MCs or something like that. He put a book out about a decade and some change ago. And now that I talk about it even more, I think that's what RBI asked him last year was why didn't he have Cool Keith in his book? <laughs> and yeah, that's what it was. And, 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 and Modi just kind of laughed it off. So that's probably what it was with that report card. Could have could have ticked off uh, could have ticked off Keith. Very very interesting. I gotta tell you, sweet and I can smell you. Hmm, what you wearing, Liz Claiborne? Giorgio, all that other stuff, Avon. You walk away, but love, I still follow you. And if I had a chance, I may swallow you. Chew you like double men, dumb like spearmen, juicy fruit. I'm a real live brother, respectable man, talking to you undercover. Watch, look, I like the way you smile. Yeah, baby, I like your style. Yeah, I Like Your Style seems like the kind of song that might have been a stretch for Ultra. It was very, very uh, anti with what I thought uh, Ultra might have been about. But I loved the song back then. It sounded good in the system. You know, I used to ride around playing that one, you know, back when I had the system car with the CD player in it. And um, that was my joint. That one and uh, Stop Jocking Me Girl, which you can uh, YouTube that one from the same album. And it was in the same vein. Um, you know, this one was a little more up-tempo. Um, I like your style. Almost like in the vein of what the New Jack swing and everything else was that was going on. I don't know if that was Mercury trying to get something commercial that maybe could get Ultra some airplay and get them into those kind of um, 
avenues or whatever. I, I don't think that will work for Ultra. I don't think Ultra is ever going to be that kind of group or would have ever been that kind of group that would have been just mainstream radio uh, kind of group. But um, it was different for them, but it was it, it was dope, and they still kept the hip-hop, you know, sampling um, Funky President by James Brown, and um, definitely, definitely thought Said G came off nice on it, and, um, you know, not, not a sappy, corny, uh, you know, uh, I won't call it a love song, but you know what I mean. Not not sappy at all. He still kept it hip hop. So that was that was a nice one on that album. Yeah, DJ Mo Love on the one and two, um, another instrumental cut record. You know, I can't I can't stress it enough how that used to be a staple for for rap albums. And um, of the first three Ultra albums, on each one of them, you you had a um, either a solo Mo Love record where he cut up or a dedication. You know, on Critical Beatdown, I played uh, Mo Love's theme, and this was uh, Mo Love on the one and twos. And it's a good cut record. Um, if you listen to it in its entirety, and I'm a sucker for a, a good Nautilus sample, especially a piece of Nautilus that hasn't been sampled by everybody else. And once again, Ultra Ultra did that. And of course, Nautilus being the Bob James record that was heavily sampled um, during that golden era of hip hop or rap records. So Funk Your Head Up was a solid effort by Ultra, but I must admit, I was a little disappointed after hearing, well, of course, after Critical Beatdown, it's hard to top that. And that's one of the down uh, downsides of coming out with a classic debut. You know, it's hard to top it. You know, and that's for any genre of music or anything. You come out on top at the highest level, you know, where can you go from there? But after hearing Make It Happen, I had really high hopes for the album. And production-wise, as far as the album goes, I think Make It Happen was the standout. I mean, it was good that they released that as the first single. They definitely did release the uh, the best single or the best song on the album as, as, the, as the lead single. But um, I was a little let down um, by the rest of it. Of course, Papa Large, the Papa Large remixes definitely salvaged the album in that way. But as far as the original versions, um, you know, MC Champion was good. You know, you had some good joints on there, but I don't know if it was... You know, some of it, I think, at the time, as I remember, felt a little bit dated to me. Um, you know, Ultra had been away for, you know, four or five years, and um, outside of uh, the remixes for Papa Large and um, Make It Happen, um, you know, that the, the first single, outside of those two, uh, everything sounded a little bit uh, dated to me. So, you know, it, it wasn't, wasn't as strong as I hoped it would be, but still a solid effort on their sophomore album. Now, I believe that the official release date for Funk Your Head Up was 92. Um, and that was, again, Mercury. And then by the next year, 93, they dropped uh, The Four Horsemen on Wild Pitch Records. And of course, Wild Pitch was the same label that Gangstar was on. Um, you know, Large Professor and Main Source was on Wild Pitch. Uh, La T and um, Chill Rob G from the Flavor Unit, Wild Pitch Records. So a respected uh, underground label, UMCs, you a nice roster. And then in 93, Ultra released something on that same label. 
And I remember getting the single for um, Two Brothers with Checks, which was a very weird song, and I'll cover that one. Um, really good production on it. Um, just a weird subject matter, you know, just like Ultra, you know, um, kind of out there in left field. But I remember getting a cassette single yeah. for it and flipping it over, and the gem on it, to me, was a song called 1212. And again, it's a cool key solo, and pushing even more into him going solo. You could just really see it after Papa Lodge yeah. and the previous album. And then hearing one, two, one, two on this one, I'm like, okay, cool, Keith, you know, he's gonna do something on his own. And then of course, as history showed us, he did. But one, two, one, two, you're talking yeah. about uh, a different style. And like I've said repeatedly through this lesson, um, yeah. a style that only he could do. Like nobody else could do what Keith did on this record and make it come off fly. And as you can see on that song, he was calling himself X or Rhythm X a lot. So he was going, you know, he was going with the uh, the aliases really heavy at that point. Now, again, I would have clowned anybody else who just got on the mic and just, you know, repeated the last word of each sentence, you know, like an echo. But uh, I thought he pulled it off real well. And I thought that was a very good use of, uh, of Skull Snaps. You know, Skull Snaps is a classic and one of my favorite breaks. And I never forget I had that record. Oh man, you know, back in the uh, in the mid '80s, one of my neighbors just gave me a box full of uh, beat up records, and uh, didn't even have a cover to it. But when I heard "It's a New Day" by Skull Snaps, I I, I said we got to use that beat. And at the time, I couldn't really work the equipment, you know, to the comfort level that I, I, I would like to have been able to work it. And long story short, I went to my DJ. I said we got to use this beat. This beat is dope. We got to do something with this before anybody else does. And you know, he dragged his feet on it. We never, never really did it. And then Steezo came out with it, and then everybody started started to use Skull Snaps, and we eventually used it. And it's not like we had a record deal, so I guess it wouldn't matter. But it would have been nice to be able to say, "Oh man, we you know we did that back in you know '85, '86." But yeah, Skull Snaps. Uh, it's a new day. Uh, very nice usage of that, and uh, good production on that. And the flip side again, uh, the actual A side of that was two brothers with checks. And if you listen to the subject matter, uh, <laughs> you still might not get it, but uh, it's, a, it's a dope song. My wiki wiki style is unbearable for this world and a planet boy. I swing at the store, buy a lunch, play the cross. Super cat chasing rats with chemicals at the bottom. I give and go with enzymes, connections, I got them. One thing, two things, like Bob and Blow Casey. Rack though and smack though, go get my boy Lewis. Let's see Ben Grimm in his exoskeleton. He's pitching the fastball, you're swinging your miss. But seven times away, clown, you're smelling the piss. Dripping off of your forehead, rolling down to the Mexico. You're caught in the bent truth, you thought you was flexible, exable. Montreal Expo, hypodermic, you turn it, you pick it up and you learn it. Now you're chilling with zinc as it kicks with the sodium. Pele came down just to sign some autographs. You have to need 
left went to El Segundo. But Jesus, I'm baking my Philadelphia steak. I got a hole in my pants. I said, oh, so I'm a Lego. Got a new jacket, was breaking out to the training camp. I dance and dance and dance and dance and dance and dance and dance. And dance. Then I sat on the toilet, wrote a rhyme and an order. Now I'm spinning and winning. Got the girlies up on it. Cause I'm kicking and sticking. Finger popping and licking. Can you do me a favor? Can you go get the chicken? As you see, we're a legion. When we're rowing, just easing up to Egypt and Pakistan. There's never no treason. Cause we're. Three brothers with chicken. Three brothers with Change courses in dialogue, regional Atlanta, Alabama, Savannah. I kick a rhyme like a ball to Indiana, Missouri, Kentucky, like then call me Bunky. Rogers, I'm nice, I float in space wow. Dr. Smith, I'm dope, you watch Sparky Loud. As I throw back a spitball, my slider and check back. The stadium's packed, bro, the people should get back and walk to the plate, yo, Jerry Grody. Pause, switch, switch, right, I get them seized on my third strike. My hot dog is done, I'm in the dugout, check it. I know I wreck shop tip. Yeah, so Two Brothers with Checks, San Francisco, Harvey. An odd song. If you listen to it, it's a lot of baseball references in it. And, you know, you have to get what you can get out of it. Um, Production-wise, you know, I think I think I heard, like, the Skull Snaps drum pattern in there. But they got, like, layers of drums in there. So I can't really say it's the, uh, the, the Skull Snaps break beat again on there. But it sounds a lot like it, the way the drum pattern is. But, um... Definitely, uh, production-wise, it's a great record. I was always a little bothered by um, Set G's voice on there. He was doing this thing with his voice. It sounded like maybe he was trying to emulate Chuck D or whatever. He was trying to make his voice sound deep, and it you know, almost sounded like a parody of himself. I didn't I didn't quite like how Set came off on that. And, you know, he never, as we can see, he almost never sets the record off. You know, uh, usually it's Keith, and the one time that he sets a record off, is I, I didn't like what he was doing his voice um, on that particular song. But... Um, the baseball theme was something that was uh, recurring in the album. And they had a song called The Saga of um, Dandy, the Devil, and Day. And it's actually a very educational song. I learned a lot about it. I didn't know much about the Negro Leagues and um, and the old black baseball players. You know, very minimal knowledge on that. And after listening to that song, I was like, I really learned a lot. And that's one of the great things about rap music as opposed to other genres of music the potential to educate because you're speaking directly. When you're singing, there's a little barrier where you can't really directly reach people and say something directly. But because we're talking, you know, as MCs uh, in rap music, it's very easy to get messages across because you're just talking. So um, I thought that was a very educational song. Um, and they also had a, uh, I wish I had time, they had a song about the NBA. Um, and you can probably look that up. Just put an Ultra Magnetic and NBA in YouTube, and they um, they go down like you know different All Stars um, in basketball and uh, great coaches. It's just you know it's dope. And they had to beat I think the chorus line, but um, yeah, Ultra is out there. Ultra does stuff that like just nobody else really thinks of. But this saga of Dandy the Devil and Day, um, check it out. Of all our great players, 
the teams in the ballpark, but we're here to shed light. Restore the glory they haven't got. Black baseball, they paved the way. With players like Dandy, the devil and they. Black baseball, they paved the way. With players like Dandy, the devil and they. Black ballpark, they played it was very far from a stadium. They only sat hundred troops as opposed to the thousands, but the stands would stay packed for the league that was back. With teams like the Baccarat and the Homestead Grays. The Eagles and many more came ready to play in cities like Birmingham, Newark, and Chi-Town. The bus trips were very long. Paychecks will bring a crown, but not to these players, because they really love baseball. You can ban them from majors, but not from the game. With players like Leon Day, who pitched almost every day, his arm would hold up, blowing hitters with smoke away. And then there was Bullet Joe, also with Smokey Joe, King Richard and Sammy G, and brothers like Impo. Next, batter up. Yeah, I always dug that song. I thought it was different, and um, and, and I, I really enjoyed it. But once again, Seth G is doing that thing with his voice, and it really, really, it has kind of irritated. It takes away from the song. It would have been even better if he had used his actual voice. But it's probably worth listening to the whole song because they went into some more teams and some more players and just people that I hadn't heard of. And I, I don't know what their motivation was on the album to go in such a direction with some of the some of the baseball references, but it was, it was refreshing. Um, they might have got lost in the shuffle a little bit by, by 93 and some of the stuff that was going on in 93, but um, a definitely solid album. They never understood many people were so slow. My funky type of rhyme and my style is psycho. Complex rest, rest, my style go SX. I move around on beat, create more styles. Showing white boys, other kids, my black styles. I kick lyrics like shoes right in your face. Yeah, yeah, that's that early '90s New York production with the with the jazz records and the um, you know the, the the drum the drum loops and the drum programs. That's definitely uh, indicative of what was going on at the time. Raise It Up was a dope record, um, definitely. And as I'm seeing, you know, I hadn't heard this album in a while. I guess that uh, said G used that voice for the entire LP. Definitely took away from it a little bit. It was a little annoying on some of the songs, but um, Raise It Up stood out as well as uh, Bring It Down to Earth. That also had uh, that, that same kind of production on it, I thought. Yeah, it's time to come on, give the people something they can understand. Something not too complicated. You know what we're going to do? We're going to bring it down to earth. Mega bomb, ignite, super reflection. Power ignites the fourth horse. <laughs> I kick styles like data, computer reading. Miles away to beam Star Trek. Moving my style up. Optimus level four. I get a warp speed. Who's on my space tour? Get with the elements. Eloquent spacecraft. Change my gamma flow. 1387, 2096. Serial silver seven. I got the skills to rap. So what you want, Spark? Style like Captain Kirk. Gamma ray one. 
a pinch, I'm hitting New York, flying with sand, I see the other world. I need some gas, yo Jim, I gotta come down, perimeters reading, we might crash. I guess that was Ultra's attempt to uh, clarify and bring it down to earth and make it plain for people, uh, simplify their style, but uh, <laughs> it's still out there in left field, but that's that's definitely Ultra, and that's more of what I wanted production-wise out of this album, that kind of, you know, like I said, that 93, early 90s um, East Coast boom bap production um, definitely was hot. And you could definitely hear Keith, you know, with his scientific uh, space talk. Keith is out there. You know, when you get a chance, uh, Google uh, or go to YouTube and search for Cool Keith and Marley Marl. And um, my man DJ Eclipse, uh, what's up Eclipse, on uh, the Rappers Out of Control show, he had Cool Keith as a guest. And they were flashing back to a time when Keith was on with Marley. And he did this freestyle. And it's just so bugged out and crazy. It was dope, but again, only only Keep could pull it off. Uh, Keep is a space to that for sure. Again, I can appreciate Ultra uh, giving Mo love. Like I said, for, for those first three albums, he, he always had some kind of dedication. And that was uh, when they called Mo Love uh, Part 3 or Mo Love 3. So, uh, yeah, you know, in 93 to still have the DJ, you know, as an integral part of the group and uh, still showcasing the DJ, that, that said a lot because a lot of people had definitely abandoned the DJ by then. A lot of groups and solo artists didn't even have a DJ, you know. Um, in 93 so that was definitely uh, something special there but like I said it, it's so much more out there in the whole ultra universe um, you know you had a, a ultra album like I said uh, previously by uh, Tim Dog and Cool Keith which was a really good album um, you also had uh, ultra laboratory stories with Mo Love and, and uh, TR Love um, of course the world of Cool Keith Dr. Doom, Dr. Octagon Black Elvis, you know, with the infinite aliases that he has. Um, Set G has done some stuff, you know, throughout the years with Dougie Fresh and Special K and um, all kinds of stuff. You go, like I said, go back and if you search Tough City's Vaults, it's all kind of unreleased, um, you know, special versions of Ultra songs. And um, it's just, it, it's a lot. And everyone will have their favorites, you know, and you got some real, real uh, uber, uber <laughs> ultra fans out there who would say, you know, uh, you didn't cover this with Keith. You didn't cover this. You didn't talk about this. But it's just definitely not a uh, enough time. The, this is a very personal thing when I do these lessons. And these are the songs that, um, that I appreciate. And I think define, you know, the, the ultra ideals, you know, what they what they're about in their sound. Again, with Ultra, it's not always what they said. Some Sometimes if you break their words down, it's crazy. And you like, you know, what the hell is this? 
but it's their cadences and their patterns and the way that they uh, say their rhymes. Like going back to Ego Trip, and I'm thinking about said G's first verse, and he said something like, using frequencies and data, I am approximate, leaving revolutions turning, emerging chemistries with the precise implication achieved diversely, ex explorating, demonstrating, ruling, dominating, Uniting causing friction with nuclear alarms separates competing biters from me, the scientists. I mean, it sounds like gibberish. <laughs> Perhaps it is. But said pulled it off over that beat. And um, Eagle Tripping was just crazy. And that Critical Beatdown album was just crazy. You know, like I said, I really could have just let every song on that one go in and just sat back and analyzed the craziness and the zaniness for what it is. But, um, uh, Hope you enjoyed that um, Ultra Magnetic. This is an Ultra Anthology, Mentally Mad. And this is your man, Jaquan. You can reach me online, social media, Jaquan VA. Website is foundationhiphop.com. Peace. Yo, what's up, y'all? We in the Ultra Lab, man. We got this beat rolling, man. We might as well start this course line. Y'all with that? Yeah, let's do this, man. Let's Yo, so how we gonna do this? Yo, matter of fact, you know how we gonna do it? Yo, Tim Dog, you lead it off, all right? All right. So we gonna, yeah, we gonna get out of here, man. It's on you. Take it, my brother. Aw, oh, shit. Call me the hick, the fit, the lick, the dick, the spick, cause I'm too quick. I'll be appraised and raised with the brain. I'm the headmaster and you're my slave. Metaphor master, rhymes all the disaster, half the class, the faster, call me the master. You wanna check, project with a simile, but I'm so large, I'll bone your girl Emily. The procrastinator, later, hater, play the straighter. You wanna be taught? Raider. I'll control, get bold, uphold, refold, in tow, cause I got soul. Many dollars, scholars, hollers. Stop and talk, but I walk away. Cause dog don't lay. Rappers wanna play, go ride a sleigh. I'll compare and dare with the stare. You say where, I'm over here. Metaphor physical, rhymes are artistical, lyrical, miracle, difficult, to some terrifical. Hypothetically, alphabetically, energetically, theoretically, no joke, hardcore. Rhymes will stick more, dog will get more. Yes, 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 y'all. I manifest, protest, and progress. Contest with reflex, cause I get co sex. I can't believe how dope I am. Give me a pound. Thank you, ma'am. So whether you think that I'm just the myth, the rip, the lift, the gifts, the ifs, the fifth, the shift, the split, the thing, control, the hold, the fold, the fold, the make, the take, and ache, the think. Woo! Hot damn, I'm great. I'm on a chorus line. It's a chorus line. It's a chorus line. It's a chorus line. Yo, trap. Yeah. What's your rhyme? Hold the beat. Stop the beat. Drop the beat. Give me a second to think of the dopest language. Liverpool, interest.